Howdy Tinker Nerds, Gigafied here. In case you missed last week's video, you can click here to watch it where I show you how you can create a self-replicating virus. Actually, it's more just like a program because it doesn't really do anything virusy. But as I promised in that video, in this video I'm going to show you how you can expand upon that base and make it do more fun stuff. So, engage desktop mode. We'll start by uh, beginning where we left off last time. So here I have payload.txt and virus.py in my Python folder on the desktop. So now I'm just going to edit virus.py. This is the code where um, that you should have created if you watched the last video. I'm going to do a couple of adjustments here. Instead of saving it to uh, a clone folder in the directory where this script is located, I'm going to save it to the C drive. So for all these, I'm just going to add c colon slash. So this makes it a universal folder no matter what computer you're on. You don't have to worry about where it's located whenever you try to call to execute it. Another thing that you can do, um, as I suggested, and I'll go ahead and do this, is we'll copy it to another location. This time we'll make it a network location. So to do that, if you know the computer's name or IP address, Obviously you have to have access to it. With this basic script you have to be able to access that computer. So you can just browse the network, see what folders are available and are able to uh, be able to uh, write files to. So I'm just going to find this folder and copy it to their desktop. So I'll just copy this path on the network and we will add that path to uh, the script here. So now it's going to create two directories. It's going to create one on the uh, victim's computer and then one on a computer on the network. And you can add as many other locations as you want. You can even set up a, um, some type of looping script where it loops through and creates a, a specified amount of, of folders for you. The next thing that I thought would be cool to add to this script would be the ability for it to create a shortcut on the desktop that links to the script, but it looks like a browser uh, shortcut, say Internet Explorer, for instance. So let's go ahead and do that um, down here. Uh, actually, before we do that, we need to download a, uh, a Python library. If you go to this website or you can just google pywin32 sourceforge and it should eventually come up with this. You want to download the version of pywin32 for the uh, same version of python that you have. For instance if you have python 2.7 installed then you want to download this one. If you have python 3.3 download this one and so on. Since I already have it downloaded installed and installed I'm just going to continue. So from this, uh, we want to um, import some more libraries. So we're going to import the Windshell library, and then we're going to call off, call up the Win32 library, and from it import dispatch. And you guys will notice as you're watching that I am deplorable when it comes to spelling. I am really, really bad. So um, you'll have to forgive me for all these spelling mistakes. Uh, you guys will probably catch it before I do. So if you're following along, try not to follow word for word. Just kind of catch the, the gist of what I'm doing. Because if you follow word for word, you're going to screw up just as badly as I normally do. All right, so now we're going to create a bunch of variables that we can pass to... Um, to the script that we're gonna create in just a second. So uh, the first variable we're gonna create is where our desktop is located and we can easily call that up using the windshell uh, function. So this uh, will just um, call up the uh, location of where the desktop is for this specific user. So on this computer it would be like c colon slash user slash gigafied slash desktop. But this is just a shortcut 
to uh, create that. So now we can create um, the path uh, that we're going to pass to our link. And to do this, we are going to pass it our desktop location. and then the name of the link that we want to create. So for this, I'm just going to use Internet Explorer because the people that fall for simple viruses like these are generally the people that still use Internet Explorer. All right, the next variable we're going to set is target, and we're going to do R uh, to, get, to make sure that we can type in a command for the from that will essentially be from the command line. All right, so, and this is gonna to point to where our virus is located. And then the next one is the working directory, uh, which is the directory in which the virus is located. And basically it's just C colon clone. All right. The la uh, I think this is the last one. Yeah, the last variable is uh, the location of the icon. Since we're using the Internet Explorer, we want to use an Internet Explorer icon for our shortcut. So what we have to do is point to where Internet Explorer is located. So um, let me go to the C drive here, Program Files, Internet Explorer. So we have IE, or yeah, IEXplorer.exe. So I'm just going to copy this path, and I'm going to type R quote, and then paste in um, the uh, file path, and type in iExplore.exe, and that should bring up the Internet Explorer icon. All right, so now that we have our, all of our variables set, we'll now create the script itself and just use these variables um, to pass to it. Should make it a little bit easier. So we're going to start by creating a new shell. Um, and we're going to use the, the dispatch library that we imported to create that. And now from this shell, we're going to call up the shortcut command to create a shortcut. Um, shell dot create shortcut. And then it's going to be, we need to pass it the uh, path. So uh, no, not patch, path. Um, so that it knows where to create the shortcut. Shortcut target path is uh, the next thing that we need to set. And obviously, this is going to be our target variable that we set. And then shortcut working directory. Guess what? This is going to be set to the working directory variable. And then lastly is the shortcut icon location. And I'm pretty sure you can figure out what goes here. And then shortcut dot save. And that's it. Now, if we save it, it should be able to create a shortcut on the desktop as well as executing the virus itself. So let's go ahead and save this. Pull up a command prompt. navigate to our directory and execute the script fingers crossed dead gummit alright so it executed the virus as you can see here um, let's see if it created a folder on our C drive where we told it to put it and it did. There's the clone folder with our virus information in it. And let's see if it created a folder on our network location. It did not. So let's see what the issue was here. Um, 
is in making the file on the network. Okay, all right, so we actually need to put extra slashes in here since it's a network location. Not 100% uh, on why you need to do this, but uh, I know it has to do with how Python interprets the, the code. So we will adjust that and again I typed patch instead of path. I don't know. Maybe that's just my fingers go to the C and I don't know why. All right, let's try this again. Got it saved. Virus.py. Ah, still got another error. Oh, it's because it says that the file already exists since we did not delete it. So in order to fix that, um, one thing that you can do is type a little uh, if statement in here. We'll put it before creating the directory and we'll just type if not OS path exists and then we'll push it uh, this location. So right now we're checking to see if this path exists or if it doesn't exist and then you create it. So we need to put a colon there and then indent this to make it an if statement. And then we need to do the same thing for the network location. And again, just put it before creating the directory. So indent that and then copy this file path over. Voila. And please tell me that it works this time. Um, so save and run it again. Bada bing, bada boom. It executed successfully. All right, so what it did was it um, opened up our payload.txt file. And in our desktop location, uh, on our network drive, you have uh, the virus cloned. It actually did not clone TXT. It did not clone the payload.txt file. Not exactly sure why. So, but moving on, you can also see that it created a uh, link on the desktop that looks like Internet Explorer. Um, but if you double click on it, it executes our virus. And if you went to properties here, you can see where all the variables we set went to. So here's the target, here's the working directory, and um, here's where the icon is located. So that's what all those variables were used for. But I'm going to move on to the next step, which is to uh, put this in an executable so that somebody can just download it and when they double click on it, it starts running. Uh, automatically after after they double click on it and so what we need to do first is we need to create a batch file um, we can actually uh, just create a new text document and we'll call this um, virus or no let's call this launch.bat because this is going to launch our executable and then it's it's very simple as far as what to put in here. If you right click on it and select edit, all you have to put in here is the name of the executable and then just add percent star and then save it and that's it. So if you double click on this it's going to launch the Python script so now what we need to do is we need to put all of these files into an executable and then run the launch.bat once the executable is done running. So to do this, um, if you look on my desktop, I'm actually going to be using a product that uses 7-zip, which is a phenomenal um, free uh, archiving utility. Uh, to create a executable. So you can download the 7-zip FX creator 
from uh, code.google.com. So here's the URL. I'll put this in the comments. And you can just download it. Uh, and it's uh, you, you can just extract it to your desktop. And what you want to run is the 7zsfx.exe and just point it to your directory. So our Python directory. We'll do launch.bat as the file to execute. And we will just call this um, freestuff.exe. Ooh, very tricky. And then just do create sfx. And this is going to create an executable. It just popped up on the desktop. So let's close out of everything here. Now if you double click on freestuff.exe, it's going to run the virus automatically. All right, so there you go. If you guys have any more tips, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And feel free to subscribe to either my Tinkernut Remix channel or my main Tinkernut channel. And don't forget to donate to my Patreon campaign. All right, I will see you guys next week.